Hi friends, this is Dipti and welcome to Life Admin 365 and welcome to today's video. Today I'm sharing with you one of my weekly meal preps and a couple of meals from this prep. First is chapati dough. I'm using my trusted KitchenAid stand mixer to knead this dough. I have kneaded 3 cups of whole wheat flour with salt, oil and water to make this soft chapati dough. Then it's finely cut cabbage. I hand shredded half a head of cabbage saving the other half for later. Cabbage lasts a long so I'm not worried about the other half going bad. Then it's hand shredded red cabbage. Finally prep the last quarter of the red cabbage for my salads. Then it's homemade almond milk and chia seeds pudding. Blended one cup of soaked almonds with four cups of water to get about five and a half cups of almond milk without straining it from the pulp portion roughly four cups in a larger jar and about one and a half cups in smaller jar we'll use a larger portion of almond milk for making protein shakes to the smaller one and a half cups of almond milk i'm adding three tablespoons of mixture of homemade peanut butter and homemade low carb strawberry jelly then adding one fourth cup plus two tablespoons of chia seeds and half a tablespoon of erythritol with monk fruit sweetener you can use honey or maple syrup instead for sweet stirring and letting it set aside. This will be my breakfast for the next two days. Then I have my low carb keto friendly homemade lupin flour bread. I bake two loaves of this bread and once they had cooled, I slice them as evenly as possible. Save the first one fourth portion in freezer safe bag for later use. Save the second one fourth portion for immediate use in the refrigerator. Cut the third one fourth portion into bite sized pieces for making croutons. And the last one fourth portion I will toast and grind and use as low carb bread crumbs for coating. Then I have prepped large block of paneer three ways paneer triangles and slices for sandwiches cubed paneer pieces for sabzi and shredded paneer for paneer bhurji moving on to fruits and veggies prepped and froze half portion of blueberries and strawberries will use fresh for snacking and frozen ones for protein shakes then i have cut up spaghetti squash peeling it was very difficult and though dicing was relatively easy i have my doubts of how well it will cook in its diced form it is mostly used in low carb world as a replacement for spaghetti because it's very stringy in nature Nature. So let's see how the sabzi turns out. Then I have butternut squash. I have had it over two months and finally I got to prepping it. Cut it open, remove seeds and shreds, peeled and cut it into cubes. I will use it for making my Thai butternut squash soup. And lastly, there are two chopped yellow onions, picked and prepped cilantro and green chilies. Before sharing meals from this prep, let me share with you cookies that I made from leftover cream cheese frosting. I had prepared cream cheese frosting for topping red velvet cupcakes but never ended frosting them. So this cream cheese frosting was sitting in my refrigerator. After hours of scouring internet, I finally figured out the correct ratio of flour, eggs and baking powder to add to this cream cheese frosting to make them into cookies. This is how I prepared these soft and delicious cream cheese frosting cookies. Take out cream cheese frosting and two eggs from refrigerator and bring them to room temperature. Lightly whisk with a handheld blender to make it light and airy. And that's right, my handheld blender died on me. Oh well, I'm going to use these whisks and manually whisk and complete the task at hand. Once it's nicely fluffed, add two cracked whole eggs and whisk them in the frosting. Mixture is slightly runny at this stage. In this bowl, I have half a teaspoon salt, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour or maida, to which I'm adding one and one fourth teaspoon of baking powder. Then sift these dry ingredients into the frosting egg mixture. Gently blend the dry ingredients into the wet mixture until well combined. Dough is extremely sticky and it will be hard to handle. Hence I'm going to refrigerate this dough so that it firms up and becomes easier to handle. Cover the dough with a plastic wrap eliminating any air space to prevent drying of dough. Refrigerate this covered dough for one and a half to two hours. Take out dough from refrigerator, remove the plastic wrap and check on it. Looks like it has firmed up well. Preheat oven to 370 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a squeeze scoop, scoop out dough on the parchment lined baking sheets. I used a medium sized scoop but small scoop would also work. Roll scoop dough balls into the palms of your hand to get a smooth dough ball. This is optional and you can skip it. I just wanted to have a slightly smooth surfaced cookie and that's why I rolled the cookie balls in my hand. I was able to get 10 medium sized cookies from this batch. Place baking trays in preheated oven. Bake these at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 11 to 13 minutes. Halfway through move the top tray to the lower shelf and lower tray to the top shelf. Take out the cookies from the oven and transfer them to a cooling rack and handle only when they have completely cooled. For detailed recipe check the description box below. Now on to the first meal from this meal prep. It's cabbage bhaji and mixed dal varan with chapatis. The night before I took out pressure cooked mixed dals from freezer for overnight thawing. Please check the video in the card above or in the description box below to see how I soak and freeze cooked mixed dals. Today I am running low on time and I thank myself for remembering to thaw out mixed dals overnight. 
Please check the video in the card above where I show in detail how I prepare mixed dal varan. While onions are sorting, I am preparing cabbage bhaji on the back burner. Prepare tadka of mustard and cumin seeds, hing, green chilies and turmeric. Then add prepped cabbage and mix well. Going back to varan, add in garlic paste, grated ginger and saute. Checking in between on cabbage bhaji as well. Then add tomatoes, saute for couple more minutes, followed by the addition of mixed dal. Stirring well, adjusting consistency with water, seasoning with salt and homemade guda masala, bringing it to simmer and finally garnishing it finely chopped cilantro. Seasoning cabbage bhaji with salt, sugar and chopped cilantro. Quickly prepared rotis but I didn't get a chance to record them as I was running late, got ready and headed off to school. Next is spaghetti squash bhaji. This is the first time I'm cooking spaghetti squash and I'm already doubting that it will not turn out the way that I'm hoping. To oil heating on pan in medium heat, I'm adding mustard seeds, cumin seeds, then hing and lastly turmeric and prepped frozen green chili squares and giving everything a good stir. Then adding diced spaghetti squash and mixing thoroughly. Seasoning with salt and mixing well. Covering and cooking for 3 to 4 minutes on medium heat. This is the first steam. Uncovering, mixing well and checking to see how far it has cooked. I think I will need another covered steam cooking round. Covering and cooking for additional 3 to 4 minutes on medium low heat. This is the second steam cooking. Uncovering and checking again. Looks like it is done cooking but it is falling apart. Cooked squash when pressed is falling back in shreds. So I am debating what to do. After trying to eat it, I realized that I hadn't peeled the outer rind enough so that even after 8 to 10 minutes of cooking, it was on the tough side and would pose challenge for chewing with chapati. So I hand shredded the cooked portion from the rind. This was such a hassle and I thank myself for trying this recipe the night before and not in the morning rush. Taste-wise, it turned out perfect. Even texture was decent. I took it for lunch for the next few days. With nice, crunchy, low-carb crackers, few cashews, blueberries, it made for a delicious, nutritious filling lunch and lastly let me share with you a couple more salad lunches that i took to school this week lately i've become a fan of munster cheese i diced munster cheese for salad topping and use sliced munster cheese for making grilled cheese sandwiches using my low carb homemade bread packing this cheese along with chopped lettuce and homemade basic hot salad dressing of oil vinegar salt and pepper and hot sauce and a few chopped pecans and everything fits so well in my lunchbox. I also have half of a diced green apple and few strawberries on the side. Another simple salad that I took to school was that of boiled eggs with chopped mini sweet peppers and blueberries with low carb crackers on the side. One more simple salad that I took for lunch was of chopped lettuce with homemade croutons and low carb keto crackers. It's very easy to prepare these croutons. Transfer cut up pieces of lupin flour bread on parchment lined baking sheet. Spray it generously with olive oil or avocado oil. Spread it evenly on the baking sheet in a single layer. Bake in 375 degrees Fahrenheit preheated oven for 10 minutes. When cooled completely, transfer them to an airtight container. These should last on counter at room temperature for about 3 to 4 weeks. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching today's video. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more such meal planning and prepping videos. See you all in the next one.